Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about a beeb. A beeb. You know what that is? I do not know. It sounds like a Hebrew word, but I don't know if I've ever heard that word before. Well, it's actually only four times you hear about it in the Bible. You hear it over in Deuteronomy chapter 16, but the most place you hear it is in Exodus chapter 13, especially there in verse 4, which says that that is the month in which they came out of Egypt. Okay. You remember when they had Passover and all of that? Right. That was during the month of Abib. Mm, so I actually have read it. I just probably pronounced it wrong. Well, sometimes it's pronounced Aviv with a V as in Victor, but you probably just noticed this word month here mm -hmm. and you just knew, recognized that as the name of the month right? and it didn't jump out at you. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, this word is extremely important because it's related to Passover and the timing of Passover. Okay. So in this video, we're going to look very closely at this word to see exactly what it means. Okay, so I know we're about to go into the Feast of Trumpets, mm -hmm. but we're studying the word Abib, the well, month of Abib that has to deal with Passover? Well, yeah, because when we put out our video yesterday on Fasting for Atonement Day, we got a comment saying that they were doing Passover tomorrow. Oh, okay. So we see my response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Then he goes on to talk about some group and how they are recognizing or redefining the words equal days and equal nights and all of this kind of jazz. And I'm like, you know what? You got a verse, you know. You don't have to rewrite um, what's already been written down. You don't have to make it up as you go. We already have instructions. All right. And seems like that's what there is. But like I said, I'll save my opinion until I see what verses he comes up with. And then I'll offer him some of mine, Enoch chapter 71, which is the authority on the calendar. But anyway, as he was trying to explain himself, he used the word Abib and started talking about it and barley and all of that kind of stuff, which a lot of people do. They mm -hmm. associate Abib with the barley harvest. And that's how they determine their year. So if the farmers are late in planting barley, then ain't no telling when they're going to do their feast days. Like you said, some of them are doing it tomorrow. I know the word barley harvest and barley feast is always a pet peeve for you. Uh, yes, it is. Because like we said, a lot of people use the so-called barley harvest to determine their year. But the scripture never tells us to do that. In fact, when you look down through the scripture and when barley is used, it's never used to tell us when any days or anything is supposed to be going on. In fact, what they're using to justify them basing their calendar on the barley harvest is what we see over here in Exodus chapter 9 and verse 30, which simply says that the barley was in the ear and the flax was boiled when these events took place. Talking about the plagues back there in Egypt. Yeah, I think one of the messages that you're always trying to convey is that as a farmer, you know, we sort of have firsthand knowledge of that seed can be planted late. Right. And just because it comes up does not mean that it's in the correct season. Right. But when it does come up, is it in the right season? Is it not in the right season? So... Barley is always, uh, people always sort of get your goat with that. Only because they're distracting people. And like this guy, there'll be some people in the comment section that will read his comment and then start getting ready for a Passover mm -hmm. this late in the season. And the problem with keeping the feast days in the wrong season is that actually gets you cut off right. from our father. Like we covered in our last video, that can get you destroyed. That's going to get people killed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why some people are doing it. I ain't saying that individual was. He's, he's been right. around our channel for a while and he's probably just repeating something he's heard on another channel. Mm -hmm. But what he is repeating is actually going to get somebody destroyed if probably him, his family and anybody else that would actually listen and keep the feast days in the wrong month are going to die for it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that that's kind of why I don't go back and forth with a lot of people, you know, as they, you know, tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. And Enoch didn't know what he was talking about and all of this, because, you know, we're going to find out in the end, right? You know, who's right or who's wrong. We're, we're all going to find out the hard way, mm -hmm. you know, either we're going to be dead 
if we're wrong or we're going to have to bury the dead if we're right. Either way, it's going to be tough. But this is a life or death situation when it comes to the feast days and when we are supposed to be keeping these days. This is not anything that we should be playing around with these feast days and keeping these feast days. So we've covered this in other videos. The Bible does not say, and I'll say it again, does not tell us to use the barley harvest for anything associated with the calendar. It's not there. It's not in the scripture. If you say it is, put it in the comment section and we'll go see. But is, you're not going to find a scripture in any holy text anywhere that's going to tell you that the barley determines when the year starts or when Passover is or anything else. I guess you're right. It does get on my nerves just a little bit. But let's go and let's try to find out where this word is coming from. Now, if you've been around our channel for a while, you know, first of all, we let the scripture define the scripture. We don't make stuff up. We don't say stuff that we can't prove by way of the scripture. And whenever there's a controversy, any type of conflict whatsoever, the scripture always wins on this channel. No, right. no matter what, mm -hmm. you know, I, we don't care. Scripture always wins. But anyway, when there's controversy over the word, a lot of times we would like to come to the Septuagint translation of the Bible, which is way older than the King James version of the Bible. It's actually what Paul and John and those guys were quoting from. Even the Messiah's quotes closely mimic the Septuagint more so than any other translation. But when we come over here to Exodus chapter 13 and we look at verse four, look what it says. For on this day, ye go forth in the month of new corn. Yeah. So do you see the word Abib there? I do not. You actually see new corn there. Right. And here is the crux of the issue. This is what Abib means. New corn. But when you look really closely at this word corn, what do you notice? It is italicized. Which means that it is what? That means that they added it. It's an added word. This right. word was not in the original text at all. Right. Somebody decided the translator took it upon himself. Right. To add that word corn in there. Hmm. Hmm. And he did this every time. When you go over to Exodus chapter 23, where in the King James Version, it just says Abib. When you look in the Septuagint, it says new corn. So it's safe to say that the word corn was not around or the word corn was inserted in there and Paul and John would have read a different word other than corn. Well, Paul and John, they would have just read it as I charge thee at the season of the month of new for in it thou cameth out of Egypt. Right. But the translators now, when you pick up the, the Septuagint, you'd have to go find you a really old translation of the Septuagint mm -hmm. because when you pick up a modern book and look in there what you're going to see is that added word corn so this is where they're getting this from mm -hmm. this is how they're saying that the month has something to do with a harvest is because somebody decided to add corn in here mm -hmm. like again you see down there chapter 34 it just says the month of bead which you don't know which month that is. Right. Not yet. We're going to get into the interlinear here in a minute. But when you come to the Septuagint, it says new corn. And all of them are italicized, letting you know that they have added that word. Now, for me, that clears it up. But I'm sure for some, that's actually making the water a little more muddy. Okay. Right? So let's go a little bit deeper and let's look at the interlinear Bible, mm -hmm. which is actually going to show us the Hebrew letters that was used. Like you said, this is a Hebrew word. Right. So when we come and we look at the interlinear, we see that the Hebrew Strong's number is 24. And when we come over to the concordance and look at what it says, its transliteration is a B, but its definition is what? Fresh, young ears. Also Canaanite name for the first month of the Jewish calendar. You're right. So you have two different definitions here. One definition is talking about, like you say, the Canaanite name for the first month on the Jewish calendar. But these other definitions aren't related to that at all. Young ears mm -hmm. and this other one fresh. Right. But let's look closely at the word itself. These Hebrew letters here and see what they mean, because that's what's actually going to clear it up. 
like we said, we like to let the scripture define the scripture. So if we're going to look at just what the scripture offers, which are this, those four letters, mm -hmm. then we can start to see what this word really is pointing to. Right. You see right here, the first letter is a left, a left. Would you go ahead and read what that talks about? Okay. Ox, bull, gentle, tame, the leader, strength, what is first, Adonai, thousand, and teach. Yeah. So if you are new to the Hebrew language like I am, you are finding out that each of these letters have meanings. Right. And what they do is they put the meanings of these letters together when they put letters together to actually determine what the word means. That's that's unlike English, mm -hmm. where we're just putting vowel sounds together to know how to pronounce a word. These letters actually have meanings. And what you can pull out of this in relationship to what we're talking about is this month is the leader or is the first. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this is the first letter in the word Abib, because it is the leader or the first. And the second letter is the Beth. So go ahead and read that one. Tent or house, the body, the household or family inside, within and amid. So it's talking about like an enclosed Right. Thing. Mm -hmm. This is this is what Enoch refers to when he talks about the portals and the gates and, and that kind of thing. This is a month here. Mm -hmm. So they have a couple of more letters added as the yard. You want to go ahead and read that one? Okay. The hand closed or closing upon to work a deed done, a finished work. So this work is actually pointing to the work week or the month. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back to the B or the Beth there, which rounds out the word Abib. And that's how they come up with the first month. That's why they're saying that it is the month Abib. It is the first month. Okay. But now watch this. When we come over and we look in Exodus chapter 9, verse 30 through 32, we see the word barley. Right. And we also see flax, which is another type of plant. Mm -hmm. And we have wheat there in verse 32. Right. I chose those verses because they have all three of those plants in it. But when we come back over to the interlinear Bible, we can actually find the Hebrew for these words. Like, for instance, barley is Hebrew number 8184. And its definition is barley. But then when you come down here and you look at the original word, in the Hebrew, notice the letters in it. They're totally different. Do you see any of the letters that's the same at all? I don't. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, let's go in here and let's look at some of these letters and let's see what it points to. There's your first letter down there, which is like sin or shin. Mm -hmm. You want to read it? Okay. Teeth, ivory, point of a rock, a peak to devour, consume, destroy, something sharp, El Shaddai. Now, does that sound like barley? You know how it has those sharp tips on mm -hmm. the end of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say teeth, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to separate the berries out of those sharp thistle mm -hmm. kind of things that's on it. Mm -hmm. Let's come back and let's find the next letter. Let's go to B, this A-N. Not sure how to pronounce it correctly. But what does it say? It says, the eye, look, appearance, to see, understand, experience, to be seen, a fountain. So this is saying that this plant looks sharp. Right. The next letter is going to be this resh or the R. What does it say? A head, a person. What is the highest, most important and chief? So it's talking about the head of the plant. Mm -hmm. It's describing the head of the plant. Right. It looks sharp. Mm -hmm. And then the last letter is the H or the H. And that is behold, to show, to reveal. So that's how the Hebrew language works. And that's how we get barley out of these letters. What it's saying is the appearance of the head looks sharp. Mm -hmm. That's how you get barley. Mm -hmm. And you could do the same thing for the wheat. You just go down through the letters. But again, you notice that none of these same letters are in the word Abib. Right. 
nor are any of the letters in the word flax that you find in the word abib. Mm -hmm. In fact, you see more of the same letters that you saw in wheat and barley, barley right. right? So these are similar plants here. Mm -hmm. This one is also going to have a head that's going to be sharp. Right. Mm -hmm. Without even going through the rest of those letters, you can tell that just simply by looking at them. So looking back over here at the first Greek translation of the Bible, the Septuagint, we see what the problem is, mm -hmm. is that the translators added the word corn on right. here. Mm -hmm. And this has trickled down throughout time to where now we're basing or they are basing their whole calendar on a barley harvest. Yeah. But it really doesn't say that at all. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it has nothing to do with corn other than the translators decided to add that word in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So what does a mean? It simply means new yeah. or first. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, when we come over here and we look at the word one, it actually starts with a left two. Wow. So Abib is closer to one than mm -hmm. it is closer to barley. Right. Mm -hmm. So Abib has nothing to do with barley. It's just saying that that was the first month. Right. The first. Right. And if you want to know when the first month is, you actually have to go to the book of Enoch. And I believe that's the problem because they've hidden the book of Enoch from us. Now we're ignorant of what the calendar, how the calendar works. And so people are actually trying to come up with alternative solution to the scripture mm -hmm. in the absence of Enoch and barley, I guess, is all they have. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not going to get them right. In fact, it's got some people celebrating Passover here in September. Right. So do you think this will put the rest, the whole story about the barley harvest? Absolutely not. Those the scripture. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate to laugh, but you have to understand that they're focusing on the barley harvest to supplant the scripture in the first place. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to circumvent the scripture by replacing what Enoch said about the calendar with gates and stars and the moon and, you know, mm -hmm. the sun and all of that, the celestials, they're actually trying to replace that with barley or, or wheat or what or their opinion or whatever. And so they're really not going to stand for the scripture. The scripture doesn't win out over there. And that's what's so frustrating is that you can show them scripture after scripture. You, we've addressed this in so many classes mm -hmm. and, you know, we've done so many videos on this, the calendar. But yet people will still come up and start talking about the barley harvest, especially next spring when we get close to Passover. They'll start hollering about the barley harvest and coming on to this channel and trying to steer people off of the feast days. And, you know, well, it seems as if they're circumventing the scripture in order to uh, make it say what they want it to say. And we know that it all comes down to Satan being the great deceiver. Mm -hmm. And he is not necessarily the person in himself or herself, but Satan comes in and, you know, like captivate us with his, his deception. And now we actually believe that it's true. So we're going to stand up for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single time. You know what I was thinking about? What's that? It's like politics, right? Mm -hmm. So you have these two politicians who are going up against each other to try to both trying to be, we'll say, the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, who who are the people going to vote for? You know, are they going to vote for Enoch and what he said about the calendar? Or are they going to vote for these other YouTubers on here talking about barley when mm -hmm. it comes to the calendar? Who's they going? So you have these politicians. One of them is a preacher. Who. Is dedicated to telling the truth, but he's going up against an actor whose mm -hmm. life is dedicated to lies. Mm -hmm. So when they're can on the campaign trail, who do you think is going to become the president, the actor or the preacher? Well, in my opinion, it's probably going to be the actor because he can change his answer to Anytime fit it. Want yeah, to. to fit it to any anything that you want him. If you say, well, what about this? He can change his he answer change to it. that. Yeah. He's paid to lie. And so mm -hmm. that's what you have here. You have the scripture, which is plain, straightforward. It's not going to change. It's not going to say anything extra to excite the people or bring them in. Right. Competing against those out there who the truth is not that important and they can change their answer anytime they want. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you go in and you tell them you want, you believe Passover is this month, 
and and you know y'all come together in some agreement next thing you know they'll be putting out videos you know telling people that passover is this month and y'all get together and you know just mm -hmm. be and 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 that's where we're at now that's why there's so many people who are celebrating the feast days wrong mm -hmm. because yeah. there are so many people who are not dedicated to telling the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth the lies are more appealing than the facts. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we still are in this Piscean age where, yeah, you're right. We humans prefer, that's why we prefer soap operas over documentaries. Right. Well, this is the documentary over here, guys. I know it's plain. I know it's boring. It doesn't change. The feast days come every year. Um, but it's the truth, guys. And like we said at the beginning of this video, it is a life or death situation. You know, so... When people come start talking about anything and there's any type of controversy, solve it with the scripture. Tell them to show you a verse. You know, it's, it, me too. If I say something that you disagree with, say, show me a verse. Right. And if I can't produce a verse on it, then I recant. I change, you know, mm -hmm. because everything that we say when it comes to the scripture should be able to be backed up by the verses. You know, you, you, you personally may not be able to find them. If some, if, if the father gives you something directly, through a dream or intuition or through right. your conscience or something like that, you personally may not be able to find the verse, but the verse should exist. Mm -hmm. Somebody should be able to find it. And if nobody can produce a verse, come and ask me. I'll try to find it myself. If nobody can produce a verse to, to, to back up the controversy, that controversy is lies. There's lies in that. Yeah. There is, it, it is, there's somebody's life. There is deception. Mm -hmm. If it ain't in the scripture, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, so, and the barley ain't in the scripture when it comes to anything associated with feast days or timing or months or anything like that. So with that, we're going to heck, go ahead and close this video out. If you got any comments or suggestions or anything, please put them in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and hit the like button and shalom. Shalom.